Welcome to this episode of Destination Dare. Every community in the Outer Banks has a story to tell, and this show brings that information to life. From Dare County history to current events, from government services to local profiles, we keep you entertained, informed, and up to date. Housing shortage equals employee shortage. The thing is, it won't be able to handle the influx of tourism much longer. What I can't understand is why this problem hasn't been ironed out by now. You're lucky if someone from local government will read this and agree with what you wrote. Unfortunately, this is a tour. What about the empty Affordable housing is a huge issue Dare County needs to face. We've heard your concerns about the current housing crisis in Dare County, and we want you to know that we are listening and we want to help. Whether you're an applicant who's looking for a place to live or you're an employer whose business is seriously understaffed because your employees can't find anywhere in the area to live, we recognize the serious challenges that many people are facing due to the lack of housing here in Dare County. And we want you to know that we're not just aware of the problem. We have been working diligently to help find a solution to the issues that the members of our essential workforce face when it comes to securing a place to live while they perform the many important and very necessary services that our residents and visitors all rely on here on the Outer Banks. In Dare County, our primary issues with the housing market are that there's not enough housing stock available to meet the demand for the workforce. Um, it's so much more economical to rent your house on a weekly basis, but it's shutting down opportunities for our workforce to find a place to live easily. In 2019, we met a group called DFI, which is the Development Finance Initiative. And that's an agency whose job it is, is to work with local governments to put together essential housing projects in their communities. They recommended that we do some kind of a community survey. What we found was we need around 1,800 units to meet housing needs. Counties can't just go out and build an apartment building. We don't have the authority to do that and start charging rent and operating it. In order for the county to build affordable housing, we have to have an affordable component. That's something under market rate rents. This is often done with LIHTC financing, and it is to incentivize developers to come in and build projects. And so DFI goes out and looks for sites that are LIHTC eligible. And there are only a few sites in Dare County that qualify for that. Most of them are not in the county, they're in the towns. While the towns are in the county, the county doesn't have jurisdiction to do certain things in towns. And so Dare County can't mandate a town to allow a project that doesn't meet its current zoning. I've talked with some of the town leaders about those sites and each town was amenable to trying to find a way to make them work. So we're very hopeful in the towns. They've been good partners in many other things that we do together. We're confident that they'll be good partners in trying to solve this problem as well. In Dare County, something like 85% of the land is either owned by the federal or the state government and is not developable. It has to meet some criteria for us. And so with the parcels that we have now, we're gonna try to see what we can do to make them work. We have two sites in Dare County. The Bowser Town site is property that we own that we're prepared to donate free into a housing project. And we have a developer who is interested who's made a proposal. We also have a project at the Elizabethan Inn. We hope to have something in the works with a plan by the first of the year so we can really start doing something and, and get a project under construction so that people will see that it can be done. And hopefully that'll encourage others to do it. Our board recognizes this a problem and our board is pushing us hard, pushing DFI hard to do something and get it done now. That we can't wait, we can't mess around. And so we've got this on the, the fastest possible timeline that we can. 
uh, because we understand it's a, it's a problem and we understand it's a serious problem and so it's going to take a community-wide effort. These two projects that we're talking about will show people that it can be done and can be done well and, and will be the catalyst, we hope, for multiple more units in the future. Congratulations on owning your new home in Nags Head. We're looking forward to having you as our neighbor with our beautiful beaches, Dowdy Park Farmers Market, great schools and so much more. We know you're going to love the town of Nags Head. And like any place you may choose to live, there are some things that are valuable to know. On the Outer Banks, it is important to be aware of tropical systems and hurricanes and to know what to do when one approaches the area. The Outer Banks is not impacted by tropical weather systems every year, or even every other year, but they do occur and it is important to have a plan and to get accurate information. First of all, sign up to receive emergency alerts from the town of Nagshead and Dare County at obxalerts.com to receive critical information. If an evacuation is called, be sure you have what you need for re-entry to Dare County. Create a plan before an evacuation is called. Be sure to fill your car with fuel. Are you staying in a hotel or motel? Can you make reservations? Are you going to be taking food and water with you? A resident reentry permit is particularly important. For more information on reentry to Dare County, go to darenc.com slash reentry. There are two evacuation routes, which are well marked with blue hurricane evacuation signs. We suggest using US Highway 64 west towards I-95. The other route is US 158 that heads north toward Hampton Roads before turning west at Barco and Currituck County. If you have special medical needs, contact the Dare County Department of Health and Human Services Special Services Division at 252-475 5500 or visit darenc.com slash special needs. There are no Red Cross approved shelters in Dare County. Inland shelter locations will be broadcast on local radio and television stations and posted on darenc.com. If you choose to stay rather than follow evacuation orders, prepare to sustain yourself for at least 72 hours. Power, water, rescue, or medical services may not be available. It is particularly important to know that emergency personnel will not risk their personal safety during the storm. Do not go out in a brief calm during the passage of the eye of the storm. After the eye passes, the winds will change direction and quickly return to hurricane force. If you're staying, be sure to refill all prescription medicines before an evacuation is ordered. Immediately following the storm, damage assessment teams will travel throughout Dare County, surveying the effects of the storm. Remain indoors until local authorities say it's safe to go outside. Continue to monitor radio and TV for instructions from local officials. Information regarding re-entry, road closures, and areas close to the public will be available on the government channel and darenc.com em. You may not be able to leave your house or travel around due to flooding or debris blocking your path, and town officials may put a curfew in place during or after a storm for safety reasons. Do not walk in storm water often polluted with runoff from chemicals, bad septic systems, and upstream pollution. Storm water after a tropical system passes can be a dangerous, toxic mix. Do not drive through standing water immediately after a tropical storm passes. The depth of the water is deceiving and any water in a car's engine block can damage or destroy the engine leaving the driver and passengers trapped. The wake from a moving car can cause additional damage to buildings. Do not become part of the problem or a victim due to your curiosity. If your home is damaged, please call Nags Head Planning and Development Department to notify them of the damage and ask about permitting procedures before making repairs. Depending on the amount of damage associated with the storm, staff may be able to visit the property and issue a repair permit on the spot. If you have evacuated, re-entry may be available quickly or it may be delayed due to severe flooding, 
street damage, or lack of infrastructure to support our population. For re-entry, have your re-entry permit, your driver's license with a Dare County address or a Dare County property tax receipt and corresponding identification with you during a stage re-entry. You may encounter checkpoints in various locations across Dare County. Tropical systems are part of life on the Outer Banks. They do not occur every year, but when they do, having a plan in place will help you through a difficult time. pristine, relaxing environment, there's traffic. It seems like we're always in a hurry, whether when getting to work, to school, or even vacation. It can be a hectic world, so when you head out, it's important to be mindful of your surroundings. Here's some ways to lower your stress level and keep everyone safe. Put your phone away. Put down your coffee. Keep your focus on the road and slow down. Do you know that on average about 160 pedestrians and 20 cyclists are killed each year in North Carolina? Be more aware of your surroundings, other vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. It will make a difference. Now, let's take a look at some topics that affect important members of our population. Our kids. Ever get confused about whether you should stop for a stop school bus? Here's what you need to know. With single lane streets, like in residential areas, Vehicles in any direction must stop. With two lane roads, all traffic in both directions must stop. What about the bypass, US 158? With a four lane road with center turning lane, only the traffic going the same direction as the bus must stop. Many of our students walk, skateboard, or bike to and from school daily. It's important to be aware of students on our multi-use paths, sidewalks, and roadways. Slow down when you're coming upon a busy intersection with students waiting to cross. Make sure you can stop and plenty of time to spare. Students, always be aware of your surroundings too. Remember to always use a crosswalk. It's the safe thing to do. Remove earbuds or headphones while you bike or skateboard and especially when you're entering a crosswalk. Put your device down when crossing. Remember to make eye contact with drivers when crossing the street. When getting ready to use a crosswalk, stop and look both ways and make eye contact with any oncoming vehicles. Distracted drivers may not see you. Only cross when it's safe. In our busy world, let's remember to take time to be aware and keep everyone safe. My name is Fabiano de Souza. I am from Brazil. I moved to the Outer Banks in 2006. I moved around the country a little bit, working in restaurants. I was a general manager in a Brazilian steakhouse. I quit that job because it didn't provide me enough time to spend with my son and do the other things I want to do. I became a citizen in 2016, and I moved back to the Outer Banks in April, and I started volunteering in May, and here I am. So the department gives you a year so you can become an interior firefighter, certified firefighter. But my dedication and the time that I spend here is gonna take maybe six months for me, maybe less. I study at home as well. When I'm home, I still go in the books and I go on the internet and I do the studies and the tests and I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Any free time that I have, I'm here. The most important thing you have to know everything that's in the fire truck you have to know where all the tools are in the truck because that's my function. I'm still an orange tag, so my duty would be to uh, support the driver. So I have to know where all the letters, the irons, and the saws, everything where is at. And we do a lot of training, fire suppression, fire attack, and we go in calls. You know, I just follow the orders and day by day I, I learn a little bit more. 
uh, I didn't know I could just come in and volunteer, and then I decided to call. I got in touch with Ron, and that's how everything began. Fabiano is the perfect example of the type of volunteer we're looking for here at Kitty Hawk Fire Department. He's driven, he's motivated, and he demonstrates a level of commitment that we haven't seen in a long time. He's been able to knock out a one-year, 110-hour training program in about four and a half to five months. We are looking for volunteers from all walks of life and any occupation. It's really important to understand that we look forward to seeing what volunteers can bring to the fire service, as well as what we can give to you from an opportunity to develop new skills and develop new experiences. Approximately 70% of the firefighters in the state of North Carolina are volunteer. So we really need to continue our recruitment efforts, not only for Kitty Hawk Fire Department, but for the entire state. Here you get training that you can pretty much go anywhere in the country but the department treats you so well that, you know, we end up staying here. We take care of the, of the department as if it's your home, you know, you have to do all the duties daily to maintain the place neat and clean and ready to go. It is important to become a volunteer so you can serve the community. It's all depend on you and how much time you dedicate to it. You know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm from Brazil, I come from another country. Anybody's welcome here. It, it just depends on the person It's wanted to be here. And you know, as much as you give to the department, the department will give back to you. Hi, my name is Greg Sherman and I'm the event director for the Throwdown Surf Classic. Throwdown Surf Classic is a community event which is really a surf contest for all kids 18 and under. It's held every year right here at Chickahawk Beach in Southern Shores. We started this 13 years ago just really to have a surf contest for kids that love surfing just like me and a couple of buddies of mine did when we were that age. And it's just evolved into much more than that now. Um, it's not just a surf contest, it's actually an event for the community where all the proceeds from the event are given right back to the community for those in need. So over the years with the event, we've, we've given to individuals, but over the past several years we've partnered with the Outer Banks Relief Foundation. We found that they know the needs of our community as a whole and can distribute the funds to a greater number of people in the community. This collaboration with the Throwdown Surf Classic is an amazing opportunity for the clients that we see in the office all year long. About a hundred beneficiaries come through the doors and the amazing energy and uh, support and fundraising help of the Throwdown Surf Classic just goes right to these Outer Banks families to lessen their burdens and lift them up when they're going through a crisis. So it's just such a an amazing opportunity to do good and I'm so happy to partner with the Throwdown Surf Classic. I can't wait to get out on the beach on September 25th. The energy level is always high. I've been involved in Throwdown Surf Classic for 10 years. One of my tasks is to collaborate with the town. The town is 100% supportive of us. They can't do enough. You know, they not only want to help us with the event itself, they help us with parking and with access to and from the beach. They have police and fire personnel out here that give of their day. They also hire the lifeguards and just make sure that the event goes off smooth and safe. And they, they look forward to it every year as well. Volunteering for our event is a great way we bring our community together. We have over 60 volunteers that help with everything from setup to breakdown and everything in between. And we definitely couldn't do it without them. You know, people donate food and beverage and prizes and raffle surfboards and so there's all that draw for the, the crowd that just comes and goes down the beach and then you know of course the competition is off the charts the kids love it there's trophies they all get excited we're now seeing 
the kids who first started in the 7U Push and Go, where they're starting to get more involved and participate. They're actively running merchandise tents, food tents for us, and really taking the passion that the board started with. And another amazing part of this event is that whether you like to surf or not, or whether you're a participant, you can give back to the community by you know, purchasing food, purchasing the merchandise, or volunteering and just donating your time. It truly has become the Outer Banks' largest family-friendly surfing event. And our whole community, they come together on that day. It's just a way that people can give back and share their love for the Outer Banks. One of the unifying principles of the Town of Duck's vision is an active and engaged community. Here in the Town of Duck, we are very fortunate to have a core group of volunteers that help us to realize that vision. As the town grows, we are always looking for new smiling faces to help represent the town. When people come together to help their community, it also builds a strong relationship amongst themselves. Here in Duck, volunteering also creates a unique opportunity to build relationships with town staff, exchange ideas, and work together as a team to make Duck the best that it can be. When we moved to Duck, we were really excited to find out that there was a very organized, very coordinated volunteer effort here in town. And so as soon as we could become involved, we were excited to do so. During the summer months, the town hosts over 80 family-free events, including concerts, magic shows, interactive theater, and more. Our two larger events are the 4th of July Parade and Community Celebration, and in October, the Duck Jazz Festival. Off-season programs, which rely on the help of volunteers, include beach grass planting, sound park cleanups, and town-wide litter cleanups. One of the great things about volunteering for the Town of Duck is that you do not have to live in the town to volunteer. Whether you're here for a whole year, for part of the year, whether you live in another town in the area, or just visiting for the week, we welcome you with open arms. We also do not have an age minimum. Children of all ages are welcome to help volunteer under the supervision of an adult. I volunteer for the Town of Duck because I have time. I'm retired, we retired here two years ago, and I just live two miles down the road in Southern Shores. It's good to give back to the community and uh, enjoy meeting new people. I think also that the, the real benefit to me from, from volunteering outside of helping our visitors who are here in the summertime enjoy their stay a little bit more, that's a, I think a real critical part but we've also made such wonderful friends. I think my favorite is the children's events, especially the magic show. I also just kind of like the results oriented part of me likes picking up trash and uh, beach grass planting. Some volunteer opportunities are less labor intensive, such as our summer events, while others are a little bit more labor intensive, such as volunteering for the Duck Fire Department. So I moved to uh, the town of Duck approximately two years ago and immediately started volunteering for the town. Shortly after volunteering for several events, uh, a leader from the Duck Fire Department approached me and asked me if I would be interested in also volunteering for the Duck Fire Department. I must admit I was a little bit nervous and apprehensive about taking on this unique challenge. But be that as it may, I headed off to the fire department and filled out an application and started volunteering down there at the Duck Fire Department. I will tell you, it's physically challenging. It's one that requires mental toughness and physical toughness. We train to standard to make sure we can fulfill the mission of saving life, limb, and property in the town of Duck. We train the first and third Tuesday of every month. The Duck Fire Department is made up of career professionals and volunteers. It's important to get into the arena, the arena of volunteering. Give something back to your community. There are many ways that you can access information about volunteering for the town of Duck. You can visit our website and see all of the different opportunities available for volunteering. You can speak with current or a past volunteer to find out what they did and how much fun they had. Or you can call me directly and I will be happy to chat with you and we can find the right fit for you here in the town of Duck.